there's guys that, that think that they can win that race in turn one, turn two. Uh, they run into people, they go off their track, they take themselves out, they tear up their cars. And this is a start of 24 hours, which is just insane that guys look at things this way. Hi, I'm Scott Pruitt. 10 time in class winner and five time overall winner of the Rolex 24 at Daytona. And I'm going to take you turn by turn around this incredible racetrack. In this car, we'll be doing in the Lexus uh, RCF GT3, we'll be rolling about 188, 190 miles an hour in a prototype. We're running 210, uh, a bit faster. And then you're thinking about going from 200 miles an hour to about 70 miles an hour going going through turn one. So the amount of, of braking is insane as you uh, head into uh, turn one in that, in that heavy braking area. So it's, uh, uh, it's absolutely incredible. You get down into turn one, uh, you're going at this high rate of speed. And then turn one, uh, as, as you exit, it, you got to think of uh, turn one and two as kind of being continual because you, as the way you exit turn one, you're preparing yourself for turn two and they're flat out. I mean, they're literally there. Or, um, uh, you, you never lift. Once you get back the throttle, uh, you're, you're hard throttle uh, up into turn three. This is also one of those circumstances where you have to be acutely aware of the guy you're passing or the guy who's trying to pass you because there's not a lot of room. You, you're using up a lot of the racetrack and it's not uncommon to get a little bit of tight quarters. I mean, really tight quarters at, at times. And that's um, one of those places where guys have got caught up in, in somebody else's mistake. They drop a wheel, um, the, their car jumps, catches the car next to them, uh, and unfortunately takes you, takes you out of the race. From there, you accelerate hard, uh, back up to about 100, and, uh, probably about 135, 140 miles an hour as we work our way into uh, turn three. Turn three, very straightforward, uh, hairpin, uh, accelerate hard coming off, um, and again, as we Accelerate hard off it. We're heading now towards uh, what we call the, the kink. And the kink is a very fast um, left-hander. You need to use up the whole track. Again, this is that one of those areas where you're, you're gonna see incidents from time to time. You're gonna see guys trying to make that move where they don't really have enough room because they get anxious, because they feel like they have to make, make that pass happen. The experienced guys will, if they can make it, uh, and they know they can make that pass but without uh, a chance of getting themselves caught up, they do. These little, small, little winglets and, and underwings and splitters, all this stuff, even though we make it as, as durable as it can, it still can be fragile if you, if you hit something. And that's one of those cir circumstances where you just don't want to take any chances with your car uh, until you're, you know, until it's money time. You know, the money time is like the last hour of the race, the last, you know, 20 minutes of the race when you're trying to make it happen. If you've got to do it then, then, then by all means, baby, you, you do what you got to do to get to victory lane first. Then back to left as I set up for turn five. And again, these are all turns where you just have to manage the car all the time. A lot of traffic to pick your way through, and this is where the top drivers earn their money. I mean, literally, you can be a group of, of 10 to 15 cars, and it's mayhem. I mean, there's cars going right to left to left to right. I have been here so many times, I feel the racetrack. Some of this timing, you actually think in your head, okay, you hit this bump, okay, one, two, okay, now turn in. As we continue on, Exit hard, I mean, you're going all the way to the left as you exit turn five, because um, you're thinking about turn six. And turn six is really important because this leads up onto the banking. So it's all about straightaway speed. It's all about how fast you can get up and onto the banking. Especially if you're racing with a guy, uh, you want to be able to draft, uh, get, get back into that, that area behind his car where you don't have as much resistance to the wind. So you can slingshot out and, and around by him. Uh, this is also a very popular place to try and make a pass. So once you're once you're up on the banking, then it's just all about hard, you know, just hard acceleration. I use up uh, when I come up off turn six, I go all the way up to the wall, and then I just gradually bring the car right back back down to the bottom of the racetrack. When you think about uh, the oval at Daytona, 
you want to make that distance as short as possible. If you run around that that whole oval at the top, you're going to cover, you know, um, significantly more uh, racetrack than if you ran all the way at the bottom. So you're accelerating hard. Um, you're you're chasing the guy in front of you if they happen to be somebody in front of you. But you're also watching the mirrors around you. And as you see from time to time, you, you the prototypes, the, the the cars that are uh, faster than the, than this level. They'll be coming by you at you know 10, 15, 20 miles an hour at uh, faster speeds. So when you think about the Rolex 24 and you think about uh, what what goes into that, it's that awareness at hour two, at hour three, at hour 15, at hour 20. You you have to be acutely aware all the time, and that's what's different than than other sports: baseball, football, basketball. There is no timeouts. You see. Um, Prototype passed me on the on the right, hard on the brakes. This is what we call the bus stop to the left, to the right, to the right, back to the left. And when you when you're going through there, it's it's very fast. Um, it's another one of those places where you see uh, guys get in trouble a lot. When you look at a lot of the, the crashes that happen at Daytona, a lot of them happen in the bus stop. It's you know, guys try and make that that last minute pass as they work their way in. It's it's very narrow. It's difficult to get through. Our guys catch a curve wrong uh, on the inside and they'll go out into the into the tire barriers off to the left. Again, this is one of those places you have to be heads up all the, all, all the time. But when, when I think about when I'm out there lap after lap after lap, you want to do the same thing. You know, you're you're trying to be very, uh, very focused, very uh, rhythmic, and, and just hitting your, your marks. And then it's just that that race uh, through NASCAR three and four to the to the start to finish. But when you when you think about the way your car moves through the air, think of it like you're driving through snow. So you're you're pushing this this air, or figuratively speaking, snow, and it's having to move around your car. And then as it moves around your car, it has this big opening at the back. And it's the same thing with, with air, is that when you get behind a guy, all of a sudden you have significantly less aerodynamic drag on, on your car. And so when you look at this big hole that's being produced by this car in front of you that you're wanting to pass, you want to slipstream up. So you all of a sudden, as soon as you get into that slipstream, you're going to start accelerating pretty aggressively as hard as and as fast as you can and wait till the absolute last minute to pull out and, and go and slipstream by. Two reasons you, you do that. One is you want to be able to get past him as, as quickly as possible. Um, and two, if you do get out there and you're not running fast enough, then all of a sudden you have what's called side drafting which is when you get out on, on the side of him, if you don't have enough momentum to get by him, you'll get up about halfway, and all of a sudden, because of the interaction of the air on the two cars side by side, then it starts slowing you back down, and then you just run side by side. So you want to, you want to make the pass, you don't want to run side by side. So the Rolex 24 at Daytona for me is, is, is that race that is the true match of man and machine. When you look at a 24 hour race and being able to go the distance and, and make it to to victory lane, it's, it's pretty awesome. And it's something that is shared by that whole team. But you're looking at that race as a fight. You know, you're, you're fighting the conditions, you're fighting the car, you're fighting the rain, you're fighting the cold, you're fighting the heat, you're, you're fighting the struggle. And then when you can get to victory lane, and again, when you can get one of these, one of these Rolexes that says winner, it is something that is so cool and so awesome. And it's such a test of, of man and machine that it's truly, uh, truly incredible. Thanks for watching. Let us know what racetrack you want us to go turn by turn with next in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next installment of Turn by Turn.